Today we're going to be talking about self-awareness and specifically emotional self-awareness. At the heart of this lecture is something that I like to call the tiny little brain hypothesis, and you'll hear me talk about this throughout the course, but essentially the tiny little brain hypothesis says that the world is infinitely complicated and complex, and that our brains are very, very tiny, and so we are always struggling to understand what is going on in the world around us because it's just simply too complicated for us to really understand in a meaningful way. And so what we end up doing is focusing on one tiny part of the picture and we're only ever seeing one tiny part of everything that is going on and we're using information from that zoomed in piece uh, to, to make conjectures or guesses and those guesses are often inaccurate. Um, so basically world is very complex, brains are very tiny, it's hard to really see what what's going on. Well, just like the external world is infinitely complicated and complex, our internal world is infinitely complicated and complex as well. For example, you probably take for granted the fact that uh, you have a tiny little person that lives in your head and uh, they're talking all day long, just like thought, 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 and they're telling you their opinion on just about everything. Um, in addition to that, just like we have this, this stream of consciousness, these stream of thoughts that are going through our, our mind, um, we also have a stream of emotions. So throughout the day, you are always feeling something. At any given time, you are feeling something, and you can check in on that stream of emotions if you want to. Um, I think people seem to be more aware of their internal monologue and less aware of their, like when you tell people they have a constant stream of emotions throughout the day, they're like, oh, really? But uh, yes, you do. And uh, to make it even more complicated, your the stream of thought and the stream of emotions, they affect one another. So your, your thoughts influence your feelings, your feelings influence your thoughts. And to make it even more complicated, uh, we not only have thoughts, we have thoughts about our thoughts. Uh, so we, we say, oh, this is a good thought or this is a bad thought. I like this thought. I don't like this thought. Um, we have thoughts about our thoughts and we have feelings about our feelings. Um, we get guilty when we get angry at someone we love or um, we get stressed out at people and then we get frustrated at how much stress we're having. So this is your internal mind at any point in time. And just like the external world is infinitely complicated, your internal world is infinitely complicated as well. And so just like with the external world, we're only ever seeing a little bubble. The same is true of our internal world. We're only aware of uh, a small percentage of what actually is going on in the complicated person that you are. Throughout the lecture, you're also going to hear me use this term non-conscious. Um, and by non-conscious, I just mean everything that's going on outside of that little circle of awareness. Uh, many people have this like Freudian idea of the unconscious, where it's this like nefarious part of yourself lurking in the shadows, trying to trick you into doing bad things or punish you. Uh, that is not what I mean by non-conscious. By non-conscious, I simply mean all of those thoughts and feelings uh, that are going on outside of your this little conscious this little bubble of awareness uh, i teach uh, undergraduate students public speaking and um, they're really nervous a lot of times when they give they go up to give their presentation and uh, they may, they might like sway back and forth or rubbing, clasping and rubbing their hands, using a ton of crutch words. Uh, and you talk to them afterwards and you're like, oh, do you know they were doing this thing? And they had no idea, right? You can even show them a video of themselves doing it. And they're like, oh, I was doing that? Um, that's what I mean by non-conscious. It's just those, those behaviors, those thoughts, those feelings that are outside of our current, present conscious awareness. Okay, so we have our little bubble here, and that bubble is what self-awareness is. This bubble that you see on the screen, that's what I mean by self-awareness. It's those aspects of your internal world um, that fit into that little circle of awareness. Now, ironically, what happens when we get really emotional is that bubble shrinks. 
the more emotional we are, the smaller that bubble of awareness is. And you know this, you, you've been in a situation where you've been so angry that you cannot see past your own anger, that, that everything you think and feel and do is subsumed in that anger. Um, and that's what happens. The more emotional we get, the more that that self-awareness, that little bubble of awareness shrinks in and focuses. Um, so it's most important to be aware of yourself when you're more emotional. Um, and when we talk about self-regulation strategies going forward, you, you have to be aware that your awareness is so limited. So the goal for self-awareness is to make that bubble as large as possible to get you to be aware of your own internal life to the full extent that you can to be aware of your thoughts and your feelings throughout the day um, and your thoughts and your feelings and reaction to your thoughts and your feelings and to be aware of this complex internal world that you have this is the this is self-awareness it's kind of this like all-seeing eye of what's going on inside of you and it's it's aware of things without getting caught up in them there is a difference between being incredibly angry and being caught up in that and being incredibly angry and being aware of that uh, and it's a subtle difference but it's a really powerful one and that's what self-awareness is it's being aware of those emotions being aware of your thoughts without getting caught up in them Self-awareness is the fundamental skill upon which all social and emotional skills build. Um, so the purpose is a leadership course, and when I think of leadership, I think of successful social interactions. That's how I really think about leadership, successful social interactions. And the heart of successful social interactions is self-awareness. Um, that if you're going to be able to deal effectively with other people, um, you have to be aware of your own emotions first. So here's a roadmap for today. We're going to start out by talking about emotions and what they are. Then we're going to differentiate between emotions, traits, and moods. 